Um, so with that, I'm going to switch over and also describe a little bit on this alternative uh, manure management program. So like I said, these are all of the non-digestive practices. And so currently what we fund, um, one of them is the conversion from a flush system to a scraping system. So that just already like, creates a more dry environment, less water, um, and then high solid manure that is scraped. And then that material can be dried or spread or it can be composted. Um, so as soon as we start eliminating that anaerobic condition and just taking water out of the system, um, you know, we reduce the potential of um, the bacteria that are in the manure from making methane. Um, so that's how it kind of um, results in that um, methane reduction. So which is different from, you know, the dairy digester program, the methane is actually then used as an energy source, and that's how we destroy the methane. Um, so methane is produced and then captured, whereas in this alternative program, in most cases, we just create conditions that prevent the methane from being produced in the first place. So flush to scrape is another one, and then we've also seen a lot of projects that have invested solid separators in there. Um, so solid separators, they will, they will remove the water, and then the high solid content, again, they can be dried, spread, or composted. Um, in some cases, we've also seen pasture-based systems coming into play. Um, you know, one of the methods they, the pastures can use is they can leave the cows out on pasture for longer periods of time. Well, what that means is the manure falls, more manure falls on the pasture where it dries off faster rather than in the barns where it might still be collected or stored in a small pond or something because the pond is where the methane comes from. So lots of different options that we accommodate through this program. And again, this program started first in 2017. Uh, you know, we had part of that share of the $50 million, $99 million for two years in a row. Um, so the way we divide between the two programs is 19 to 33 is the range that's available for the alternative projects. And then the remaining of the range is available for the digesters. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why they're divided up like that. Um, digesters reduce more methane in comparison to uh, AMMP. Uh, so we are also trying to track like what type of projects and what combinations of different projects would, will help industry get that 40% target. Um, and the other is that digesters are also just a lot more expensive than the alternative projects. So once again, there's a map here, and as you can see, you know, this is where the Central Valley is where a lot of our dairies are. So even the AMMP projects are largely here. But we also have dairies on the coast that tend to be pasture operations, um, and then more in the northern side of California also. And many of those have participated in this alternative program. Um, so, so far we've funded 56 projects. And once again, here's a CO2 equivalent number. Um, again, it's not, um, as a hard number, it doesn't convey much, but if you might remember the number for digesters was 1.8 um, million for 10 years, so a lot more reductions than this program. Uh, and this year we received another 91 applications that are currently under review. So we hope to get many more projects on the ground with this one. Um, so on this slide, just have some photos of the types of projects we've funded. On the top left is a vacuum truck. So that is a conversion of a scrape system type example where instead of flush lanes, they put in a vacuum truck and then the manure is then put out into windrows for composting. Uh, on the left bottom one, um, that's kind of just showing the vacuum truck, how it moves through the lanes. Um, and then the big picture on the side is a solid separator system, which I'm sure many of you have seen many times. But then again, this material that's collected after solid separation, after drying, it can either be used as bedding uh, for the cows or it can also be composted uh, again. So since last year, we've also heard from the industry that you know, there is this target for methane that they need to reduce and of course the programs that provide incentives but there wasn't a lot of room uh, for folks to try new technologies and new practices. Um, one of the reasons for this is the way we designed the program, you know, we wanted to be these programs um, set up to succeed. Um, and these are programs where we really needed the technologies that were ready for the farmer to use. Um, so, you know, we kind of stayed away from the more research and demonstration type projects because we kind of really needed to get to the point where we know that the green, the GHG reductions would be guaranteed because that's what's important for our uh, uh, legal mandate there. 
Uh, but last year, after we heard from the industry that they were really interested in seeing new technologies as well, we did a carve out from our $99 million funding and provided up to $1 million and $2 million respectively uh, for testing and demonstration of new technologies for alternative manure management as well as digesters. And then we also had um, $250,000 grants to do more uh, education and outreach with dairy producers as well um, so that those who have not yet participated in the program can start considering if they would like to. Uh, so these, pro these products are also under review right now. We received four applications for each of them. Um, so hopefully we'll know what kind of technologies we're going to fund um, soon in another month or so this year. So going forward, we have another $34 million for these programs. Um, and then we also now have a new legal mandate where the department develops and provides technical assistance. Um, so a lot of these projects are complicated to apply for, complicated to develop applications for. Um, you know, the applicant, in many cases, especially for the alternative program where there isn't a developer involved, you know, the dairy producers might have to do a greenhouse gas calculation on their own, um, and we know that that can be sometimes be time consuming or challenging or just an issue with resources. Um, so we're working with our uh, university cooperative extensions, our resource conservation districts, and other nonprofits with the correct type of expertise to provide that technical assistance so that producers can apply to the program. So this is just kind of in a nutshell an overview. Um, so I just want to say thank you again for allowing me to present. We do have a really great team here at CDFA who works on these programs. Um, and I'm just going to close off by showing clips from a, a short video of one of our producers who received the alternative manure management funding. Um, the total video is over five minutes long, and Leslie will have the link to this video if you're interested. Uh, right now, I'm just going to play a small part of the clip. These windrows, um, part of this manure came from the corrals. We scraped and cleaned the corrals um, after the winter. Part of this material comes from the bedding that we use in the winter time. It's all from the dairy here. The Magnuson family applied in our very first round um, of our program, the Alternative Manure Management Program. And what makes them special is that they actually implemented a variety of, of practices that, would, that uh, folks are eligible to apply for. So instead of choosing just one practice, they did multiple. So behind me you'll see that uh, they put in a solid separator to separate the solids. And they also use those solids for bedding for their cows. And they even land apply it to their pasture so that they can increase the time that the cows are out in pasture from uh, previously six months to now eight months out of the year because that compost adds beneficial nutrients to the pasture and the pasture grows longer. The great thing about the CDFA mission, this grant, um, was that milk prices have been terrible. <laughs> and, you know, all these projects needed to be done, but um, nobody had the money to do them. One of the things that I try to do is create a sustainable operation. And, yeah, this grant is going to help us continue to be um, sustainable, uh, returning um, compost and the manure back into the soil for fertility, that's one of the main goals, is really to try to keep it sustainable and pass it on to the next generations.